do. So, uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to Men Speak Radio. Uh, I'm Bertie, and there's Kenny and John with me. I don't know how to <laughs> introduce the radio show. Um, and yeah, today we're going to be talking about how to take your space, um, you know, with your family over the holidays. And uh, yeah, we're just going to be doing it like the usual men's group format. So normally we do, we check everyone's agreed to the ground rules. So does everyone agreed to the ground rules? The ground sure. rules are available from? Uh, the website, somewhere on the website. So somewhere on mensgroups.co.uk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, cool. So then we do two minute silence. Are we doing two minutes? Uh, 30 seconds. So let's do um, your name, um, any background info you want to give, that's for you, for you John, and um, how you feel right now, what Christmas uh, used to be like for you, and how you take your space during Christmas. Uh, do you want to start, Kenny? No. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't remember the list. So my name is Kenny. How I feel right now. Bit weird, bit moody, bit extreme, short attention span, tired. Um, sun's not going down yet. Quite a nice day out though. I've spent most of today in two check-in groups one client and time in the kitchen with my wife while speaking to my folks. Um, and I, I really enjoyed all of them. And I was really, really looking forward to hoovering the house because it's like, even while I was washing up and putting things away, it was moving. I don't get to move so much. I was moving around and chatting where it's usually in front of the screen, which is a bit bonkers really. Um, so, and two things, I guess. Okay, so how did Christmas used to be? I went to two places. One was, I remember one Christmas in Uganda, we hired these kind of, um, I guess it was a theme holiday. They were mud huts um, and a boat on a lake and things like that. And there were monkeys. So as soon as we opened the back door, there'd be loads of monkeys around. And if we held out things, they'd come and take the food from our hands. And I remember at night time, because there'd be like a hole uh, and the bats would come down and they'd go round and around and they'd go lower and lower, like relatively low. And it's just like, that is another, another, another world to this world. And then I remembered one Christmas where I was in Fiji and I was in my mosquito net with this mosquito. Her name was Myrtle. She took a dislike. In fact, I think she liked me a lot. But yeah, we had one hell of a night, Myrtle and I. But yeah, and then Wales, I was saying earlier that family tradition in Wales or personal tradition in Wales is I wasn't much of a drinker, but Fishguard's very well known for Fishguard Square and all the pubs and hanging out in the bars. And it would be the only night really that I would be going to the pubs in Fishguard and just meeting everyone from school or from the street or from the town or from church or whatever, because everyone would be back. And then straight from there to midnight mass 
and then we'd be picked up by our folks and maybe some of our friends go home, homemade mince pies and whole homemade Baileys. And yeah, I was just speaking to my mum and she's got a tradition where she makes carrot cake for Megan and Megan makes Christmas pud for her. And that was a big thick thing for us in um, Africa and, and in Wales as well, making food and sharing food and stuff. It doesn't happen so much in London. So I forgot all about all of that. I, I forgot about all of that because I'm so in the moment, man. <laughs> and how do you take uh, your space during holidays? Walks. Is it, is it uh, an issue with you and your family? Do you just say, I'm just going out? Or not an issue. You have to say it's not an issue. Yeah, because most people uh, have to justify or come up with the right words. Otherwise, people get upset. No, that's foreign lands to me. Um, it's quite a few years ago where everyone in my life, whether they like it or not, knows that if it's not said, it doesn't exist. So I'm not going to be looking for hints and working things out and second guessing and coming from the land of fear and fantasy. Um, and as a kid and stuff, yeah, didn't want to go to church or didn't want to do this or that or whatever, but it was no real big deal, but not an issue. Not an issue to not even ask for space. It's like, whose is it to give me permission? And if anyone's not happy about anything, then speak about it, see what's going on. But it's not some big process thing. It's just, it works the way it works and people get on with it really. Rather like the Waltons, do, 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 do. Maybe not. So we, we heard quite a specific example from someone me and John were chatting to earlier who said, so he's there with his fam with his family and his his you know his partner and the kids and um, the mother in law and he's like he's the only male. He's the only male mm -hmm. and he's expected to just stay there because that's the that's the um, you know Christmas. Christmas way is to just spend all day together mm. um, and play happy families or yeah. do the duty. Yeah. Doesn't sound very happy to me. Do you know, one thing that this brought up is it is, I would say the time of year where a lot of men or boys can feel, I need to get away from this. I need to meet my friends. I need to go for a drink or a drive or whatever. <clears throat> And I wonder whether a lot of it is, it's the second guessing game. What am I supposed to do? Um, who have I done something wrong or bad to? What have I forgotten? And for me, the strongest, most powerful, most free man or boy, myself at the front of this queue can be crumbled by uh, being criticized or abandoned, being withdrawn from being dis a disappointment. It's like, I do not want a woman to be angry or upset or scared or sad or anything. I need to be the most impeccable, perfect man. And it's not even that I care that much about her or anyone to be frank, it's all about me, let's face facts. But the feeling that I have had when I feel guilt or shame or abandonment or you know, any of those kills me. So it can be the second guessing game. And it's just like, you know, walking on egg eggshells, but not anymore because now I'm not that vulnerable and I can ask, you know, what do you want, what's expected? And then give information about, well, this is where I'm gonna be around or this is what I need. Knowing that I can change gear anytime. If anyone's got an issue, then same for me is I can take care of the little boy in me and I'm not going to be take, taking care of the little girl in you or the little boy in you. You sort that out. Enmeshment is just so 80s, don't you think? Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Kenny. John? Yeah, um, I'm John. Um, I feel, feel strange, well, very relaxed, actually. Um, I. Do you want to say how you ended up here? Like, 
who you are to the, the masses that are going to watch. Yes, of course. Um, I've been coming along to the Men Speak Men's Groups for just over two years um, and have a number of sort of good friendships and connections with uh, men in the groups. And Bertie, you invited me here today. So thank you. Um, yeah, this is the first one of these like podcasts. Is it podcasts? Is it radio? Everything. Yeah. We're, it's not, we're not limited. First time I've been broadcast. Um, yeah, so I'm feeling pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, it's been a, it's sort of that time of year where you look back at the year and you're like, oh God, and this is quite a big one to try and get your head around. But um, I'm kind of in a state of um, flux in my life at the moment. I move, I've moved uh, to a different part of the country and I'm sort of in between jobs and um, and that's all really exciting, but it's uh, sort of uncertain ground. So I don't know like if I feel quite calm because, you know, Christmas is one thing that is quite certain, um, even though like the normal, the normal, family elements to it this year aren't around as much um but yeah i feel like i've got quite a lot of space at the moment and i'm able to able to take it more so than i have ever been able to i think and that's i don't think that's just about i think that's about asserting myself more rather than any happy coincidence or sort of a, a period of time that has just come about um yeah, so Christmas, Christmas, what, what was it? What is Christmas, what did Christmas used to be like? Yeah. As a child, I remember Christmas always being about the children. So I remember like efforts by my family to like meet up with aunts and uncles and cousins so that the kids could be together and share in the excitement of Christmas. I remember a lot of that, which I think kind of ended when I was a, probably a teenager. And then it was just more like, small nuclear family time um, and just sort of food and presents and um, not, a, I don't, I don't remember a, like a dog walk, definitely walking the dog or going for a walk, getting outside at some point on Christmas day. Um, and then in my adult life, it's been, it's been probably like where we would, where are we going for Christmas? Because I've got an older sister and is it at her house? Is it where I'm living? Is it at my parents' house? Is it, is it somewhere, some other family's house? But um, my sister's got young children now, so it's, it's often about the young children again, which is kind of lovely. It brings the joy of Christmas, I think. Um, but also, I think I've noticed that it becomes very very much like not about the adults at all, like having any rest or relaxation themselves. It's all, it's all gotta be for the kids. And I don't know, like the last few years, I, I think I've got quite good at just sort of taking, taking myself out for a little bit, going for a run or going for an afternoon nap or like and sp spending time with everyone and like enjoying that, but also spending time on my own, which is quite, um, quite needed, I think at this time of year. Um, yeah, what, what were the other things? I think you, you kind of um, covered it a bit. Is how do you take your space mm. over the holidays? Well, a bit like Kenny said, like getting outside. Um, I go for a run every Christmas day. I've done that like the last 10 years. I've done, been for a run on Christmas day, um, often on my own. A few times my sisters joined me, but mostly on my own. And that's kind of a way to take my space. I remember as a like younger adult, when more of my friends lived in the same area, like the area I grew up, we used to go to the pub, you know, Christmas Eve, maybe 27th or 28th, and then maybe New Year's, like a group of us would meet up. Um, how else do I take my space? Do you have I think I'm, I'm learning to do it. Do you have to like, say anything to your family or do you just do it or do they get upset or um well i don't think i i don't think i have to say anything 
I think they like me to, they like me to let them know what my plans are. Um, and I try and fit in with like the sort of family little, what, whatever the family traditions are, like if we're having like brunch or like champagne and, or and orange juice or something like that, I try and, I try and be around for the fun stuff. Um, but the stuff that it's nice to be together for. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I probably, it's best that I do, it's best that I do say, like rather than just disappear off um, for, for their sake, I think. Um, yeah. Cool, thank you. So I'm Bertie, uh, I feel, I'm pretty, pretty tired as well bit cranky um didn't sleep very well last night um and yeah it's just it's pretty cold out there very cold um uh yeah christmas used to be um like i used to absolutely love it i used to go ballistic christmas um just the you know the presents and the what's under the tree and that is just like uh, it used to drive me wild i'd even i even remember like uh, it used to be at my best friend's house when i was like a toddler and i used to i like scratched open one of his presents just to see what he had as a present like i was at his house and like i like scratched it and like looked at it and I only remember that because I got caught. Someone, his sister was like, did you, did you open one of his presents? <laughs> like, that's how much I loved Christmas. It's just like, uh, so, so yeah. And, and yeah, same as kind of what you said, John, it was like very much a kid's affair. It was like, um, I'd normally have my sister, um, my cousin and maybe some other cousins would turn up um but yeah and then there was like nieces and nephews and so it was always it was always great with the family we'd always uh have my granny would cook christmas dinner and um we'd all sit around the table and um yeah it was just it was lovely um it was really it was really nice um for how i take space um yeah for me it, it's it i don't need to say anything really i just kind of do it but we our, i suppose our christmas has changed quite a lot and we don't really spend much of it together and um you know we'll we'll, we'll have dinner um but most of the day we're kind of doing our own thing um so there isn't really a need you know to, to take my space um and i guess my family is quite um easy going in terms of that i don't need to you know justify or, or say that i'm going out i just kind of just just do it um but but yeah like it's also good i think the way uh, they do it you said john because it kind of shows that they care a bit like it can feel a bit like they don't care um if they don't you know say anything or don't you know expect you to be around or anything like that i think my brother and i were totally different um i couldn't really be bothered to go anywhere um and i really fancied being at home hanging out um music and just and then people would drop by and my friends would come over. I've never learned to drive and usually the weather is absolutely shit in Wales. So I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so people would just drop by, I guess, friends or whoever, or, or even that wouldn't happen so much on Christmas. That would be rare. Maybe later on. It was just family time to be together. And it was all about food and digesting in front of the tv um maybe playing something but mainly it was church presents food and yeah it was our our home family party maybe you know my father would always put records on 
and there was just some of our favorite, favorite music. So yeah, it was the party rather than need to get away from this to, to get space. And I guess if I needed it or if I needed to phone someone or whatever, it would be when there's a space naturally from family stuff, then I might do something. And if I needed it, I'd just nip out, probably not because of the weather or go to my room or something. Very different. What, what about for the people though, like the one we the guy we were just talking about where, you know, his family, it doesn't seem like they're the party. <laughs> That's a huge difference uh, between, I would say most of my friends and me is my family have always had lots and lots of friends um, from Wales for the last decades, from Uganda, when they go on holiday, wherever they go, they just seem to make friends and hang out. Um, and thankfully they're not annoyingly needy or anything like that. They just do their own thing. And even the way they get on with friends will attract other people that want to hang out with them. And they would go for dances and picnics and fishing and church and more dances and where adventures my parents are really good at having adventures and they attract people so that's been my norm that's very very much been my norm and I guess it's been the same for me that's not to say necessarily that you know I, I don't come across as shy but I'm shy and I was seriously shy uh, my mother was really shy but you wouldn't really, but we're all quite shy, but it's just wanting and enjoying connection rather than being showy and competing and doing all of that. So yeah, it's very different for me to have that norm because I guess it's easier for me to just be around and hang out rather than needing to go somewhere to find it because there's the parties over there rather than the parties right here. Sounds quite genuinely joyful, Kenny, like you're, your memories of Christmas with family, like, and I, like, I'm wondering, like, is it genuinely joyful? Because my my experiences are like, it's kind of like a forced, a bit of a forced joy. Like, well, it's Christmas, we have to enjoy it. We have to enjoy these things. Um, they would also be family sulks and dramas, um, and I would say a lot of them are probably quite normal about the anxiety of the food coming on the table at time or this is going to be late or, you know, just anxieties and attachments to how things should be. Um, but to be frank, I would say, luckily, there has been uh, a genuine, genuine joy and celebration, even when times were really tight. My first Christmas in the UK, um, we were refugees and we hadn't seen my father for um, a few months because he was smuggled to Italy and I remember being taken to two different families for different parts I think one for Christmas maybe after church and lunch and maybe another one was for dinner um, and it was quite tragic because I wasn't happy we were desperately cold we had chill blains we were traumatized refugees. We had absolutely nothing. Um, and the people were very nice and all that, but I remember the other kids who I liked in school um, and they were just in the spirit of Christ Christmas and going pow, pow, with their guns and things like that. And I couldn't relate to any of that. I was just fucked basically. I just couldn't relate to it. And I remember the first um, Christmas we had in, in Wales after my father came here and we did another refugee camp and then our home. And uh, we had nothing. We didn't have any money for decorations or presents. And, you know, we had food and stuff, but it was, it was proper poverty. But man, we had a really, really, we were talking about this the other day, excellent time because in school, we made Christmas decorations and it was great and it was really, really good fun and we took them home. And then as a family, we made Christmas decorations and they were great. And we used them every year for so long, even after they, they faded because they were our Christmas decorations and it was fun. So I guess maybe we had no material wealth, but we had, and we were, 
traumatized, I guess, and in shock and stuff. No, well, maybe we weren't, maybe it was just on our normality, but we did our thing. And for years, there was a sadness with it because it's like that feeling of let's put, let's make it work um, type thing was around. Uh, but we need to get over it and we have got over it. We got over the poverty. Poverty was shit. We'd rather not have, but you know, I wouldn't change anything actually. It was shit and scary. I wouldn't change any of it. But yeah, there were there were fights and salts and squabbles and you know, it's it's all part of love, isn't it? What do you think the main difference is between your family and what seems to be most families in the south of England? Community, quite simply. I would say that's the beginning and end of it, is community. Um, in Africa, my family were, same as everyone, I wouldn't say at the heart of, but same as everyone in the Goan Catholic community where everyone went to church and everyone knew each other and each other's families and had the same customs and manners and it was just normal that everyone went to the dance at this time and went fishing to went picnics did whatever and it was very civilized and you know another thing is we'd never heard of violence we'd never seen violence um i had this conversation very recently suddenly i realized that i'd never heard of violence when i was in school and my mother and their generation went to the same school and I asked my cousins and it's like unheard of that there would be violence, even shouting. We were naturally caring, sharing community. And in Wales, it was a very different flavor of community, but everyone took care of everyone and shared and was open. We lived on top of each other and they were squabbled. But, you know, how else can we learn boundaries and trust and sharing unless we're left in the playground? But if there's too much mollycoddling, then there is disconnection. If what, it's all what do you mean by that? Left in the playground Sorry? Of, what do you mean by that, left in the playground? So with us, um, it, in, in Af well, in Wales, we were playing in the streets or playing in the woods, or we, we were all bunched together, um, where with a lot of people around me, there isn't that community. There's a lot of space. There are big houses with high walls and people aren't together. There isn't a place and everything has rules and formality and separation and all of that where people don't learn about boundaries. People can't get hurt. People avoid embarrassment rather than it being connection and a place to explore boundaries. Um, and it's, it's shocking how in the head relationships can be. And there's my, I mean, look at social media and Instagram. I need to look like this and have this and do this or whatever. Then I'm good enough to connect with, or then I won't be rejected. Rather than I need to be sitting next to someone, having a chat and taking some risks. Um, and I might or might not be rejected, but this is actually connected and it's real. It's not my power or status. And these are the rules. It's here we are in each other's laps, what shall we have for tea? <laughs> and yeah, there were a lot of poor people and everyone shared and we were taught how to cook. Um, we were talking about Anne next door in number 17 and how um, Anne and my mum yeah, had a great conversation today because they come from the coal mines and they were talking about how washing would take a day and they'd need to wash the clothes and have the the tin um, bathtub ready when the husband comes home from mining and it needs to be hot. So you're washing your clothes and then the water and then after he gets out, they all go in and out of the water one by, and this is just normal. And this is our next door neighbors who redecorated our house so we don't move down the road. And that's just, that's normal caring and sharing. That's being on top of each other and choosing to be friends rather than going in the head and Googling how do I kill my neighbors? <laughs> and COVID's brought this in. People have got to know their neighbors and people have been vulnerable. People have been out there like, no, I am rich and powerful because I have the most Andrex out of the whole street. And then it went from that into, do you want to be a bum love? 
people went from total hoarding into caring and sharing and thank God. And I guess fear is separation and competition and not communicating and staying separate. And that gets to hurt so much that surely at some stage it turns into love and someone's gonna say something or share something or care. And that's what I've seen happen during lockdown is people have gone from isolation into even talking about physical touch. The English I know, to be frank, avoid it like the plague and say sorry <laughs> at the whiff of it. Suddenly, not only is it wanted, but it's acceptable to talk about. What's going on with you people? <laughs> <laughs> but, it reminds, yeah. yeah, it reminds me of what we were talking about. Like we talked about earlier how if you were maybe open to change in yourself or development, that maybe this year the, the challenges of it have accelerated that that growth and development because things like that have happened like like it's okay to talk about need for touch human touch and it's okay to ask people how are you no genuinely how are you doing how are you getting exactly. on like yeah and it made me think actually like christmas christmas is about community not necessarily just about family it's yeah. about community and it reminded me this time last year, actually, I decided that this Christmas I would I would spend Christmas Day volunteering. I was going to have my own Christmas and volunteer at like um, a homeless shelter for young people. But I, that has kind of completely gone out of my mind until now. And I think for many reasons, like COVID and life changes, but um, that was about sort of taking my space, but also about genuine community and having like you know sitting down next to someone sharing something and sharing a conversation um rather than rather than it being just about family and doing the same things mm. you reminded me of another christmas um the opposite to the english is when i moved to fiji and if you're the only one on the bus and someone what gets another male gets on the bus then it would be really abnormal for him not to sit next to you. <laughs> there would be something really drastically wrong, like you've got a disease and everyone knows about it. And there was one Christmas, my, um, one of my closest friends, Mere Tuivo Ratunambuabua, is Fijian and she's the daughter of the chief, the chief's dead now, so she's, you know, the head woman. Not that she lives in the village that often, but we were supposed to go back to the village uh, for Christmas when I lived in Fiji. And it would mean that we'd have to get up really quite early from our home in Suva in the capital to catch the bus or the run it, the running cab and everything. And we bought the, you take um, Yangona, um, what do you call it? Like roots uh, as the offering and do all the ceremonies and stuff. So we had all of that ready. And But you know, typical Fiji time is didn't quite get up, didn't quite make it. And we ended up staying at home. And what happened is the neighbors, but, but when there's a big feast, you have what, what they call it a lovo, which is a, a hole dug in the ground, quite relatively deep. And you have uh, the fire, big fire, and you make stones like really, really white hot stones from the fire. And you put them in the hole, like an earth oven, I guess. And then you have all your fish and all your shenanigans and your roro and all of the these um, vegetables with the coconut and in banana leaves, and you put it in the lovel to steam for ages, absolutely ages. And it's a big deal and it's a huge feast and it's absolutely wonderful. So we ended up just doing it with the neighbors, you know, and that's the way it is, is if you see in the village, or if you see someone walk past your home and you're eating, you call them and you genuinely want to share your food with them. Can you imagine? And if your kid's not home, you can assume that he's just crashing at someone else's home and it's, it's just, he'll be fed and everything. That's living, that's caring, that's community. That was our street. That was our street in Wales. That's just normal. That's the difference. It's the separation. And I love the way that we've got three groups on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, Boxing Day because there are a lot of people who are lonely, whether they're, or a lot of people who are surrounded by people and 
exactly as you say, they need space. Space for me to exist beyond who I turn into in front of my family. I'm not a naughty little boy. <laughs> Why have I turned into an angry rebel? I need to get sane again before I go back. <laughs> listening to, uh, actually, I got a bit emotional just listening to your uh, talk of, you know, how it, how it is in Fiji and uh, with the communities that you've been in. Because it makes me, you know, realise how much of a gap there is between current, what feels like Western society and that. And it just feels so, so different. Yeah. It just feels like a, kind of like a dream or kind of like childhood, like how yeah, it was, exactly. you know, when I was a child. Um, and also I was really, yeah, I found that so interesting, the, the thing you said about how it was because people are living on top of each other. And I was just thinking like, maybe that's why, you know, um, in, in council houses and, you know, places like that, there, there generally is like more of a community mm. um, compared to when you go to rich people places or, you know, more middle class places and people are spread out. I've never heard that before. So that's a really interesting perspective. We used to um, knock on the Pope. Next doors had a phone and we didn't. And if there was a phone call for us, they'd knock on the wall and we'd know to come over. And um, we'd know each other's habits. So we'd be respectful of um, noise and stuff. And Gran um, next door, her name was Eunice Reese. She liked classical music and she knew the ones that we liked and she'd turn it up. And when we'd see each other, she'd say, oh, did you hear it? So, so I played this, turned it right up for you, I did. I knew you'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> and she introduced me to Schubert. And strangely, I, I really quite enjoyed Schubert. So I bought some uh, bootleg uh, uh, cassette tapes while I was traveling when I was in <clears> Thailand. <throat> and I introduced my friend who recently died her name's Milika Vakalala, we call her Auntie Millie. She's one of the aunties from the Fijian family, we introduced her to, to Schubert. And the first time she, she, she was just the most wonderful woman. I can't believe I'm never gonna see her again. And she used to like, oh, put on that, sh the, the Sherbert for me. And I just, <laughs> I love the way she said it. And after meals in Fiji, you, banaka nakakana. And still, in my mind, after my wife fed me, I just think that it's just normal honouring and it's thank. Like a, it's like a phrase you say. Thank you for the food, yeah, for making it, for it being grown, whatever. But it just happens in my mind. It's really, it's, it's part, of, that is real life. This actually hurts. Do you think that's why you feel emotional, Bertie? Because it's like, oh, why don't I have that more? Because I, I feel a bit like that. Why don't I have a bit more of that sort of community? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Definitely, I would like more of that. Um, and I feel like I did have some of it, you know, growing up uh, until the end of secondary school, at least. Um, just with my secondary school friends and with the you know family and extended family uh we were kind of just always in each other's space really don't need the space if there's love there mm. and i was thinking about this and i just don't know how we can go from here to there now in the in the west because it's like there's so much distrust and paranoia and um, people are so feel so broken uh, that they just don't, you know, it's like it's almost like they won't accept that. They wouldn't accept community and love because it, it'd just be distrustful of it. Or like in London, you know, it's like your thing of the, the person coming up and sitting next to you on the bus if you're the only person on the bus. 
Imagine doing that in London. <laughs> yeah, even before COVID, that would have been madness. <laughs> I would be, yeah, like dialing 911 and in my pocket. But then the way things change and can possibly change um, on the other side of this is entirely up to the way that we live our lives. No mm. one's going to give permission or say, right, chaps, guess what? <laughs> There's a new kid in town. We're going to be touchy <laughs> and make eye contact. No, it's the way we live our lives. That's the beginning and end of it. And since lockdown, the number of blokes I've got to know that come to the check-in groups who have fundamentally changed where they come from inside and they know quality, they demand quality and they're not going to sell out to the old life like they used to. It's all up to the way that we choose to live our lives and connect. Makes me think, Bertie, you, you sort of ask like, how are we going to move to that? Because I don't know if there is actually as much distrust and like suspicion around like community or like people like doing nice things for each other as as is assumed there is I think there's actually a huge amount of people who just want like just want the opportunity to be open-hearted and be like to share something and mm -hmm. to have a genuine connection they just maybe forgot they don't recognize it or they've forgotten it and I also makes me think well how is it going to change I remember a few years ago I asked a colleague how she was spending Christmas and she said oh I think um, I'm spending time with my chosen family and it's like her and her closest friends are just spending mm. spending time together like a day or two together and making their own traditions and making their own like Christmas the way the way they wanted it like the way perhaps it wasn't in their family and the knowing that like going home to their family they might not they might not get what they wanted from their their break like um they were sort of making making their way and i think that's the way things will change like sort of trying to sort of because we i guess we all do have a choice i'm i like i'm i'm here where i am out of choice today um i don't have to be uh, although, although I would, I am homeless if I'm not here at the moment, but uh, like, um, cause I'm living with my folks for a little bit before I find a place to live in, uh, in January. Um, but we do have a choice. Like we don't need to just follow the same old traditions unless they serve us well. Like some of the traditions you've mentioned, Kenny, like knocking on the, knocking on the wall or, you know, sharing carrot cake and Christmas pud. It sounds great. Like carry on those ones until the cows go home, but get rid of the stuff that like doesn't serve us well, for sure. Yeah, it sounds like you and Kenny were saying the same thing there then. It was kind of like, uh, it's, that, it's that quote, uh, be the change you want to see in the world. Mm. Mm. And I suppose, yeah, like from, from this conversation, I've, I want to be more, I don't know, try and be more connected with people or, some, or something like that. Just not necessarily be the one to sit next to someone at the, in, the, in the empty bus, but um, just, um, I don't know, not be so step back. Cause I know I can, I can definitely be that, you know, uh, cold Londoner, or at least it appears on the surface. Um, and if, for me, it's just, for me, for me, it comes from like, inadequacy and it, it does come a bit from distrust as well. I think, I think I, I am a bit paranoid of people when I'm in London um, just of getting mugged or attacked or, you know, anything really. Um, but, but yeah, a lot of it is inadequacy as well. So it's like, I wouldn't know what to say to someone if you know they sat next to me on the bus uh, and you know am I going to run out of things to say you know am I going to be boring is the conversation going to be boring uh, one thing I've realized is I have a big fear of being drained as well which stops me interacting with people um, 
just in case I get it's draining. Um, but I guess that's like what you said, Kenny, that's learning boundaries, learning to say something which can change the course of the conversation. And I feel that what you've said um, just now, um, it feels to me a disconnection in, 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 the head, in the head. What shall I say? Or even how do I do this? Or, you know, it's nothing to think about. It's not so much what's, what's going on on the outside. It's not necessarily even noticing or thinking about what's going on on the outside. I'd say it's more about where you're coming from on the inside. And then you'll naturally attract and engage with um, the side dishes. So <laughs> <laughs> you dance on your merry way. Do you know what I mean? It's like you're the main course. How could you not be the main course? It's your life, it's your perspective. And as you move to life's um, garden patch, dolls worth of salads and people and places and situations and encounters and thoughts and feelings. It's just taking part from where you're coming from. Do you know what I mean? Where I know that fear can be quite the opposite. It's scanning, thinking, second guessing what's going on and how do I manage this and how do I survive this and what might happen and what do I need to avoid from happening? Um, and that's a very, very different perspective. But I'd say that's the switch. Um, and I thought I had it soft before I left the UK. But my God, with all the different cultures I've taken part in, I've just unlearned so much. It's like my own personal COVID stripped back to the bone, raw, to the bare essence and start from here because this is the part of me that needs to connect and the disconnection that people have known since lockdown and the disconnection you know there's that line i think i used with you earlier in the week that i read somewhere something about the greater the wealth the longer the table rather than the higher the walls but the disconnection that we have been through has left people with serious emotional and mental health issues and quite simply connection, just breaking the spell in connection and then starting from there, being able to speak from there is the key. Connection is the key. Not thinking about it or hoarding it or protecting it or God knows any of that. It's like, what kind of distractions that connection's the key. And I've noticed how quickly in the last, within the last month, people's moods change, even in one hour in one of the check-in groups so quickly, which is why it was important to have something to aim for first thing in the morning. Um, so people are safe if they're on the edge or just have a place to check in and gain some sense of self before venturing into the, the great cabbage patch of life. And same at the end of the night, when it's gonna go dark, it's gonna get lonely. How am I gonna see myself through? like little de delightful oases in time. Is it oases, the plural of oasis? It's not oasis. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's bringing a bit of hoil to the, um, to the isolated, a bit of connection, a bit of fun. And you know, that's the great thing, is the ones that I've went to today, is it's as much the facilitators as good friends that like to hang out, hanging out, as it is meeting the people that have come to hang out, to come to the group. So it's a really, really great place to, to be us. It made me think, Kenny, when you were talking, I was like, how can you like, how can you give the gift of connection to someone at Christmas? Like, could you, if only you could like wrap that up in wrapping paper, put it under the tree for them to open on Christmas day. But maybe it's not maybe it's not quite that that simple. Um, That's the tragedy is so many people think when I have enough, when I am enough, then I'll, I'll be good enough to have that. But you can't buy it. 
Mm. It is the thing that money can't buy. And also, I think it it requires taking risks and like being brave and like facing possible like rejection or I don't know. I think I think it. It takes two people to want to have it, like rubbish. It takes one to start and to stop thinking because the disconnection and the thinking is being out of it. And it's noticing when you're out of it, taking a breath and depending on which way inclined you are, it's breathe in. Thank you for reminding me who I used to be. Breathe out and take part with what's in front of you or three, two, one, Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll wrap that. I'll wrap that little message up in wrapping paper. Three, two, one. Fuck it, and give it to someone else. Yeah. Stick it in your crackers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good place to end, I think. Um, so we we're running check-ins three times a day. Is that right? Twenty fourth, twenty sixth, twenty fifth, twenty sixth, and thirty first and first. The 31st and the first um, at 10 30 to 11 30 12 30 to 1 30 7 to 8 yeah the so meetup.com slash men speak to check that stuff out um, oh so happy christmas <laughs> <laughs> is that is that a christmas card or is that your book that you've written kenny uh, uh, no that's whoops this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't a setup for a plug. That is a Christmas card, is it? Yeah, yeah. How cool is that? It's about catching. It's about adjusting your sails to catch the winds of change. Oh, nice. Yeah, I made that up on the spot. Yes. Yeah, That's <laughs> deep. Ooh. We need to do this, don't we? Yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> So, Nadoli Klawen. Come again? Say it back. Nadoli Klawen. Klawen. Nadoli. That's easy. Nadoli. 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 Klawen. 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 That's it. That's Happy Christmas in Welsh. Nadoli Klawen. Nadolik Cowen. Nadolik Cowen. <laughs> <laughs>